What's going on guys and welcome back. I am still up here at Southside Sales and Service and me and Bruce are going to walk you through uh, something that we kind of touched on in the past but not like through like jump in the kind of pool type deal. But we're going to talk about off-season maintenance. Now the past couple of years I've done uh, summarization videos which they kind of overlap with one another. But we're really going to get into what to look for and what you guys should be doing to your sleds in the off-season to make sure that you are 1000% ready when the snow does fly. So again, we are still here at Bruce's 9R from last year, and we are just gonna kind of go through this thing top to bottom of what to look for, what to change if need be, and uh, some things that you guys should be doing or should be looking for on your sled to make sure it's all ready. So Bruce is gonna kind of walk us through what we got here. Hate to interrupt this video because it is a really good one. It's a long one, but there's a ton of information, so you gotta stay tuned for the whole thing tons and tons it's filled with info so stay tuned but anyway some housekeeping before we get to this video this weekend so july 14th 15th 16th is the 24 hour northeast challenge that my buddy mike pilot is racing in i will be there friday saturday and sunday he is in the iron man class so it's one man one bike 24 hours uh, I will be there. Bruce will be there. We are his pit crew. Um, so I don't know when Bruce is getting there, but I'll be there early, early Friday, setting up the pit and everything. And again, we'll be there till Sunday. Um, that's going to be cool. It's in Odessa, New York, I want to say. Uh, he's doing it on a Yamaha Tenere, which is pretty wild. And we'll see if we can last 24 hours. Side note, on top of that, the... 322 Threads giveaway is still live. Now, I appreciate all the support that you guys give through uh, watching my videos and liking my videos and so on and so forth and sharing them. Well, this is another way that you guys can support. So I started 322 Threads, which is this company, and uh, pretty much anything that you purchase off the website, off 322threads.com, automatically gets you entered into win either a brand new KLX 110 or two grand of cash if you guys can't use a bike. So now you guys can go online, you can get this shirt that I'm on, or that I'm wearing, you can get these gym shorts that I have, you can get this windbreaker that just came in that is super, super nice. Anything that you purchase automatically gets you entered. Every $1 that you spend right now gets you 20 entries. So go online, get a t-shirt, get a hat, get shorts, get a bathing suit, get your baby some clothes, get your toddler some clothes. Whatever is on there, when you purchase, it gets you automatically entered into win this bike. So guys, that's it. It's all the housekeeping that we have. Now to this video, hope you enjoy it. Okay guys, yeah, so with the summarization thing, that's that's one thing. You know, you're, you're washing it, greasing it, and putting it away. And so it's just a matter of now, it's summertime you start thinking about okay what do i want to do to my sled extra or what do i need to look at to make sure that when like jesse said when the snow flies i'm not going to have an issue so that's what we're going to work on now as far as you know if you grab grab it and you bring it in your garage what am i what am i going to do so you know we pull the side panels and the hood off here and we'll go under the hood a little bit and then we'll go from there I was gonna say I know it's June but you should remember how to get that plug out yeah I know it <laughs> I'm starting to think there's a boost and it's on the other side yeah nine R in there boys and girls so under the hood you know it's obviously you're gonna replace spark plugs because you know that's what you're gonna do whether you put your spares in here uh, that you take out or you got fresh ones, but you're, you're definitely going to change your spark plugs. Again, the cleaning thing that we talk about, you know, inside, inside these areas here, just kind of, you know, between all the belt dust and everything, wiping all this stuff down and, and on the other side, because you know, clean is good. You know, it just, otherwise it just gets like worse and worse and worse. And yeah, then it magnifies each year. And then if anybody, uh, your buddy, you had your buddy fill your oil tank <laughs> and he's tend to like it, you know, where it's the infinity across the top of the thing when they put the cap on and it all goes all over the place. So then it really makes a mess. So you want to, um, 
again, stay up on that, keep that stuff clean, especially something like this through the season. If you've got any spill here, it's running down and it's getting where the belt is. So that kind of stuff you want to tackle pretty, so pretty quickly. Being on this side, and we're going to talk about clutches, obviously we have one off at this point, mm -hmm. but what should the general consumer or, uh, you know, snowmobile enthusiast look for? Um, if they don't have tools to take it off, if they're not comfortable with taking this off, what should they really do? Well, first of all, you want to look in here and make sure you don't have a broken spring. Okay, that it's a common thing to see. Sometimes you can't see it in here, but most times you can. It'll, it'll break somewhere right in the middle, and then it'll start to climb inside of each other. So you look in there, and all of a sudden you see two coils like touching each other because the thing like screwed together. And, you know, you just, you open it up, boom, you're looking right at it. So... First of all, yes, you want to make sure you don't have a broken spring because that is a thing. Other than that, blowing this out, you know, some compressed, compressed air, air, blowing these things out. There's no lubricating that you want to do. It's, it's all about being clean, again. Um, down in here, which is your slide for this bearing, and then in here, which we'll get on the bench and we'll show you where the belt runs, it, um, those areas need to be clean. You don't want them to start, you know, if they're in a real moist area and they start to get the little the little pits of rust, you know, then literally the clutch will start sticking. So, yeah. you know, clean is very important there yeah. and making sure you don't have that stuff starting. So if you wanted to really get your clutches kind of gone through, you don't feel comfortable taking them apart, you bring them to your dealership. Yep. What are we gonna do? Or what are you gonna do? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna pull the clutch right off. We're gonna take this off. The spring would have been sitting right here. Um, that spring, is, like I say, making sure that it's not broken you know, we can usually see it before we pop it off, but we also have a, a spring tester that we know the poundage of what that spring is supposed to be. We put in the tester, we, ch we tested it two lengths and make sure that your engagement pressure and your full shift pressure is within about 10 pounds. And, and that gauge works like a charm. I mean, it's like, a, it's like a, an arbor press with a digital gauge on it. And we use it all the time. I, I use it all the time for racing uh, because you know, if, if you're trying to fool around with weights and different weights and, and changing weight, if your spring is off 20 pounds, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're just anyway. going backwards. Mm -hmm. So I've always used that and now we use it, it's easy check. We don't have to assume, oh, this clutch, is, this spring's got 2000 miles on it, it must be bad. <clears throat> we take two minutes, we put it in that, we check the pressure, it's good or it's bad. One, it saves, you the money because we don't change it for nothing but it and if it isn't broken by then usually that kind of means it's a good spring <laughs> because uh some it's sometimes they don't they happen just like that or they last for ten thousand miles right you know they should be changed at like so spring check three yeah so yeah spring check again cleaning because it's easier for us to do with it out the other thing is is you have rollers and then you have weights and these weights run on that roller. Um, we check the, we'll pull these pins out because like these here, they can already see the pins are nice and free. Okay, a lot of them, you'll do that, the pins won't move. You'll put an eighth inch Allen wrench in and a, three, and a three eighths wrench and you'll literally, you'll take the nut off and you'll have to use the Allen wrench and just squeak the thing out of there, you know? And these weights all have bushings in them now. So again, you don't lubricate them, but they do get dirty and the stuff gets packed in there. That belt dust gets packed in there and it just squeezes down on it. And then what'll happen is this will be pivoting, but instead of pivoting on the bolt, it'll be pivoting the bolt. With so the it, bolt. Yeah, so that's not good. So again, we'll pull those out, clean all that stuff. Again, look at the weight, make sure that there's not any flat spots on the weight. If there's any sort of funny looking wear on there, you know, again, you're feeling that roller, that roller will have a bad spot or it blew a bushing out. Right. So when it blows a bushing out, it moves a lot and then it'll start to put a, a groove right in it. So that's, that kind of stuff is what we're doing on the bench. Uh, the rear clutch, you know, this is what it looks like when it comes off. We take the T27s out, take the Helix out. That looks like this. Uh, when we take it out, there's no spring behind it. You don't have to worry about like this, this cover is under load. When you take it off, you gotta be very careful. This is not under load because it has a, this here goes, goes on and there's a big clip see, and washer behind it, clip behind it. 
so you don't have to worry about it other than if you were going to take this out because you were going to check this spring or change that spring and that takes another special tool to hold that together take the clip off and then thread it apart to get this off when you take this stuff off or or even if you don't take this off and you're taking the helix out you this is sitting down there you can spin these and make sure that they're they're free there's no cracks in them um, there's two styles there's the large roller and then there's a small roller they both do the same thing it, it's a matter of they changed the large roller i think in 2020 in most things so in a large roller one the groove is much wider compared to a small roller the groove is narrower you don't use one with the other but the idea of checking is still the same you're just checking and make sure that they're okay very easy to change by pulling a clip and then also inside of here you know what does this look like you know dumping all that stuff out wiping that stuff out so now someone that doesn't have the tools doesn't feel safe what point would you recommend them bringing it to you um in mileage wise yeah yeah i mean if you've got 1500 miles on it it should be ready for another chain case oil change and these kinds of things done but but 2000 miles definitely mm -hmm. yep so clutches i mean that's what makes you move so you want to <laughs> yeah you want to make sure that they work right when you're going into the season yeah yeah you do because you know again it's just downtime uh belt wise always checking your belt making sure you know again with it off it's easy to see how much clearance that there is between the belt there usually you don't like more than about twenty thousand, so that's about what that is right there um if it has too much again the belt can be worn and you know if you i i don't like to go more than 1500 miles on a belt just performance wise this belt will last four or five thousand miles without an issue mm -hmm. other than if you burn it you know get stuck and burn it um tow your tow your buddy skidoo out but uh, <laughs> it's just a matter of performance wise 1500 miles because they get narrow and then when they get narrow and you're starting you know, third gear and yeah not this first is, gear. you know this is a whole nother video you know as far as when this you know how far this weight has to move before it touches the belt, the belt because the narrower the belt the more it has to move just like you said you're in third mm -hmm. gear yeah you know the relationship to everything is yeah. completely different so that's clutches again if you don't feel comfortable call bruce mm -hmm. um visually inspecting though now we're on the other side of the sled you know we have brake pads here's your brake side yeah yeah you can you can get down you can pull the darts and a t40 screw here and then you can look right down at it yeah, it's hard to do right yeah now, but. the the pads are <clears throat> are usually about a quarter plus inch thick so you start getting near an eighth you want to change them because the pistons start coming out a lot further and they can get cocked when they get out further like that uh, the other thing is is you know you're checking your your chain play like that just to see you know and you can adjust that chain with the uh, bolt right here you can adjust that in just to start just to get rid of that play so you've only got that little bit like that yeah um, and I mean 500 miles you get a service done you're supposed to change it chain case oil next step is what 1500 miles you say yeah it says 2000 in the book so that's 1500 more yeah fit right yeah so 1500 more so you want to do that um battery there's, there's only like 10 ounces of oil in that chain case mm -hmm. so it gets beat to crap i mean really bad so it's it's to me another very important thing to have done because it is again these movable items are weak links the drive the driven the belt in between the chain all these things are making the track go mm -hmm. so so <clears throat> this one doesn't have it bruce opted for lightweight this year with his 9r yeah but a lot of times there's a battery sitting there so yeah. i mean that's another thing that we were talking about before we even started the video yeah and it's like you know it's a thing that gets overlooked quite frequently um especially if it's not sitting in your shop and if you store them in a trailer yeah. you know it's kind of like you put it in there and it's like you don't even think about the battery so you don't charge it you don't put it on a trickle charger which these sleds come with now right yeah you got the the um which, know, I, I don't have it because i took mine out that little rubber plug weighs a lot um so that that's right there and that's what you use to uh to tend tend the battery right. but again it's in your trailer it's out in your yard you're probably not going to tend the battery no. you know it's so we do recommend pulling them putting yeah. them on the bench yeah i pull it i charge it 
poof, and I leave it on the bench. So it's it's fully charged, sitting on the bench, and then it's there in your garage. You know, again, it's something in whether it be August or September, you hit it again. So you because the the thing the killer of those batteries is letting them die. It, I swear to God, if the battery stayed charged, it, it just you know lasts four times longer. They have such a, a, a low life expectancy because they just go dead. People they're, let them, yeah. They, people let them die. Them hooked up, and they just that's it. They mm -hmm. just go dead. So it's recharge. Then when you go to put it back in, whether it be October or whatever you're doing it, put it on. Make sure a green light. Put it in because you know you're doing it in October. You're not going to use it till December, probably. You know, so there's still a fair amount of time, and it's going to be very cold then. You know, they're all they all feel great when it's 70 <laughs> degrees on the thing. Uh, crank right over, and then comes to December, and not so much. Mm -hmm. So, what else under the hood could people check for? Um, obviously, antifreeze. You want to make sure that that bottle's full. Coolant full. level. Coolant yeah. level. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the springs, uh, exhaust springs. There's plenty of them on these making sure that they're there for one, making sure that they're not overstressed and, and you feel this and it literally is just moving back and forth because it has gotten heated so much that it's now it's got memory. It lost its tension. So you, you know, you change that because again, it's something, it, those kinds of things when they're loose is a big performance loss. Uh, you've got three here, two here, one underneath. Those are in the heat, wicked. Again, those get loose that you know you're you need this tight you know that that's where all your performance is mm -hmm. so again very simple thing very inexpensive plugs simple very inexpensive uh, cleaning is just time that's all it is yeah. and then you know in your normal nut and bolt stuff at that point is you know making sure that the rotor bowl is tight making sure that your chain bolt is tight if you're not going in there and taking it out make sure that your adjuster bolt is nut is tight Again, it's something if that loosens up and backs up, it's going to leave you in the woods. Yeah, it's going to be a bad day. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also in the book, you were talking about brakes before. Two thousand miles, they do recommend changing your brake fluid. Yeah, um, you got to think of how hot that thing gets. Um, some worse than others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Old Jesse brake here, he's definitely on it. He um, doesn't seem to realize that the brakes slow him down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if you're at that mileage mark, you want to, you know, if you feel comfortable doing it, I recommend bringing it to your dealer. Make sure that all the air is out of it so that you don't have any bubbles and no... Yeah, I mean, you would literally be um, sucking the fluid right out of there and then putting fresh in and then opening this bleeder and then bleeding through. You know, the stuff that's going to come out of there is black. No question. Mm -hmm. It's black. Um, so, and then, it, you know, it gets moisture in it because it's been hot, cold, hot, cold. So you're just slowly pumping, bleeding, pumping, bleeding, and then adding here, and then you'll see it all of a sudden, it's all clear, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you, you, you know, system's not that long. It's, you know, it's pretty easy to do as far as that. <clears throat> and that kind of brings us to like the front end, which we have a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about here, up there. Mm -hmm. um, but anything else that we can think of, we are going to have... One thing that we wanted to touch on, but we don't have them with us, is A-arm bushings. That could be some off-maintenance or off-season maintenance that we... Uh... Yeah, that's, that's here, uh, top and bottom. Uh, they get a lot of play, and we, we're going to do a video on that whole thing as far as looking at it, changing it, and seeing what you gain out of it when you do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we did talk about the bushings that are in this, the two plastic bushings. Where did that ski go? The, the, the metal bushings oh. in it. Jesse moved it. Yep, so I mean, ski wise, whether it be a stock ski or CNA, you have. You have these, these two plastic bushings, one on each side of the spindle, and then this steel bushing, which slides through, and then you slip it down over the ski, mm -hmm. uh, into the ski, and then tighten up. And as I was stating in the other one, you know, if the bolt is tight, and as long as your, <clears throat> your ski is in good shape, in other words, these bushings are, should be tight in there. <clears throat> Even with a CNA, they have their own bushings that go in flush. They should be, they should be tight. You shouldn't be able to like easily move them or take them out because that's going to be play. Because when when the spindle is dropped in with this, and the bolts run through it, when you tighten it, you're squeezing the ski to that metal spacer. So when you do that, 
there is no play between the bolt, the ski, and spacer because you've just tightened that package up as long as there's no failure in the plastic right here. So now the only play you're dealing with is these bushings where your spindle is, that, you know, that play there. So that, you know, ball joints, those kinds of things that we're gonna go over when we do the, the, mm -hmm. the A-arm ones. But here, important, in the skis, it's tight, there's gonna be no play, then you have these that you can knock out and change. Mm -hmm. And then otherwise, ski-wise, obviously check your carbides, make sure they're there. Yeah. And you don't have the new Bluetooth carbide because they don't work very well yet. Nope. Um, no. And last year was pretty rough on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we wrote all sorts of stuff last year. Mm -hmm. um, you could check your ski rubbers too. Uh, make sure that they're not cracked or anything. Yeah. Make sure that they're in one piece and that they're still doing their job as they're supposed to. Yeah, because they get flattened out and uh, CNA ones are, are wide, but they get flattened out too. And, and you start to get ski play in it and we did a thing we talked about putting spacers underneath the rear of the rubber of the ski on either style so that basically you have a heel pressure on the ski less darting turns easier you know again another maintenance thing especially if if you are doing if you're not doing something like that doing it if you are doing something like that it gets worn again needs to be done again right so you gain that heel pressure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's Pretty much everything we have on the floor and now we kind of come up to the bench again as we have some hot topic items that we talk about quite frequently but um are often overlooked yeah um in our eyes uh definitely not taken care of quite like we would like them to be no i mean i get a lot of shocks in from you guys you know we did a ton last year and we're already doing it again this year but you know when there's over a thousand miles on a shock it should be it should be rebuilt you know so at that point you know the oil starts to look really tainted in color um, there's a lot of sediment in the bottom of the shock and all that stuff just keeps running through the shock so you know to me every thousand miles that should be done if you're putting a couple thousand miles on in a season obviously okay you're not interrupting it then but then you definitely want to do it before the next season and um you know whether it be ski shocks or rear suspension shocks they take a pounding i mean they just are abused often. you gotta think of how often that the shaft, shaft is, going is traveling through that body in and out mm -hmm. and it's going fast yeah so you know it is time to do that you know obviously we do a lot of valving and we talk about all those things getting things set for your weight because it isn't optimal when it comes from the factory and especially, you know, depending on how you ride, you guys are filling out sheets, sending me with your weights, how you ride, huge help. I mean, it, and usually I'll call you, say, you know, I got a question on this, question on that. While I'm working on them, I do it, we make the decision, we yeah, do it. Yeah, when they're right on the then. bench. Yeah, right then. And plenty of this stuff, we take it out with a thousand miles and you'll push on it like this. And this shock should go in and then come right back out and top out. There's plenty of them that'll have a gap. You'll push it. It, and then it'll stop and you literally push the pull the rod back out again that is awful you know you, you're starting the season like that it's going nowhere but bad and bad and badder right yeah so we definitely and i mean again we talk a lot about this and a lot of guys have sent them in to get them revalved and reworked for your, again your riding style and your body weight but the guys that even got them set up and like them if you put miles on them you got to get them sent back just to get freshened up maybe not changed up but freshened up new yep. oil uh some new gas yep. uh bruce will check them over if any seals are bad or anything like that everything yep. will get replaced mm -hmm. and uh you want to make your uh ride as comfortable as you possibly can yeah for the short season that we have it is and you don't want to ride blown out shocks because that's no fun no and then once you, once the season starts then it's like well i don't want to do it right now i got to see a thing planned two weeks from now it's like you just get it done now you know get it get it done get it in put them back on when you're taking the suspension apart if you're you know if you're not bringing the snowmobile to me and we're doing it um because then we'll do the maintenance where we'll you know check your wheels and those kinds of things make sure that's okay um when you have this all apart and the shocks are out you can move all this stuff much further than where it goes so you can grease this stuff a lot better you can take the bolts out if you want. Take that, take the spacer out, wipe the crappy grease out of it, um, recoat it, put it through, put it back in, re-grease it, fresh grease. 
it's not that hard of a job to do um and it's you know it's rewarding because it's gonna, gonna last it's mm -hmm. gonna last yeah mm -hmm. Uh, on this end, you got another grease fitting down in here. Again, all that'll be in your hand to clean and start over again. Um, all the bushings that are in here, these, all these shocks that are in here like this, they have bushings inside of them just like that. And the bolt goes through. So these things are just constantly going like this. Again, and there take, is no grease fitting on them either. No grease fitting. You take it out, make sure it's clean. You know, it's not rusted. It's not rusted in there. And then obviously when you start moving, it's going to break free. But the rust is in there, you know, again, you're cleaning it, you're doing those things. Same thing on the bottom, same thing on the bottom here, uh, same thing on the top here, it's all the same like that. Yeah. You know, now, if you are gonna pull your shocks out, if you want Bruce to do them and you, you're not in an area where you could kind of bring them the whole sled and you wanna send them the shocks anyway, you know, obviously you have a lot of these bushings and everything. So Bruce is gonna just touch on kind of what is what when you're kind of pulling all these all apart. Yeah, like on this shock here, when you're taking this out, you have you have a bushing that's that's in there like that and this the one that's in here is a longer bushing because there's ears on this so the bushing actually sticks out and goes into this little bracket and you, where your bolt goes through but it's the same kind of deal where you've got this and bolt and then you you know any of this stuff i'm usually blue lock tightening uh to tighten back up again because again it pivots a lot so you don't want to have a failure because when something like that comes apart it makes a real mess then. <laughs> yeah so yeah that's a real bad day yeah so then up here same kind of thing it's just a smaller bushing but same kind of thing there that bolt you can spin it around there's a hole in the wheel to get the bolt out um this one down here you you the best way to take this out is to take the lower bolt out <laughs> There's, there's actually a lower bolt for that swing arm here and you do have to take this wheel off but the bolt comes out then this whole thing will come up in the air you know it's all in your hand much you know just everything is very easy to get at you can clean it a lot better and check all these check all these wheels because yep, they have a tendency of plenty of times they're they're locked up half locked up bearings are cheap it's quick and easy pop a bear pop the clip change it um, all very important stuff. Slides, don't forget about these. You know, this one, you can see the witness mark here. There's plenty of slide on this one. Um, you, sometimes you'll see them where there'll be a big giant flat spot right here, almost to the line, or in here where there's no wheel. If it was dry run, you'll have this and it'll be really thin. Again, take the screw out, knock them out, get a new set put in it. Um, when you're taking the rear shocks out, just like I stated, you just have the bolts with spacers on all these. When you take a ski shock out on these here, you have top bolt, bottom bolt. One bolt's a little longer than the other because this has a casting it's going through, whereas this has just the steel plate, which is thinner. You know, the steel is a little stronger, so it can be thinner. Um, so you, you want to make sure that you put the right length bolt through where it goes. Uh, on a VR, on an XC, you have two ends that look like this. So that's all they have is a spacer. Go up there, put your bolt through. Down to bottom, XC, same thing, has another spacer, goes through there, put the bolt through, you're done. VR1, like this, has a spacer on the top, and it has what they call eyeballs at the bottom. So the eyeball at the bottom, when you take the bolt out, it has these spacers here these little top hats they go on there and one o-ring and it goes on there and the o-ring basically makes it so that when you bolt this on like this it just keeps the eyeball straight because that o-ring is just pressing into there so realistically on a vr1 it's just made to keep the bottom straight and keep from rattling on a xcr like that is what you have is you have both ends with an eyeball so a lot of people call me and ask me a question because each end has these on there like this and each end has one o-ring so they'll say am i you know they'll am i missing an o-ring because i have a space for an o-ring on on <laughs> four spots not just two and i'm like no you only have two o-rings one on top one on the bottom and that is literally there so that the shock can't pivot a lot. That uh, O-ring is just solidifying, so this will only just move a little bit. So that's what you'll get on, a, on an XCR ski shock. 
So XC shock I didn't have here, but basically it'd have this same end on both ends. Mm -hmm. So again, those are, you know, where you send them in, we're checking, making sure you don't have any leaks, you re refresh gas oil, so they're good to go. And then obviously if you want changes, we can change them. So <clears throat> that is really, I mean, I don't think we didn't touch on anything. Yeah, track, track tension once this goes back in, or if you're not taking it out, you know, your track tension bolts are right here like this, and you're just moving them evenly and they're pushing the wheels back to tighten the track because with, with all the power we have now, the tracks do stretch and you do need to, to tighten them up. And there's a, a scale that tells you in your book as far as how, how much tension should be on it if you're hanging a weight from it, you know, that kind of thing. So you don't, so the track doesn't ratchet on the drivers. Right. Which is a nasty sound. Yep. But that is uh, off-season maintenance. Yes, there is a lot of moving parts, which is why this video was uh, a bit longer than what we normally do. But we wanted to make sure that we touched on really everything that you can and need to do for your off-season maintenance or that you need to check on. Um, again, I say it all the time, is these things take you from point A to point B all the way to Z in freezing cold temperatures. And the last thing you want to do is have a breakdown because that's never really a good day. And our season's short enough, yeah. or it's too short at this point in time. And... Uh, you don't want to kind of cut your season short. So go through your sleds, guys. Make sure that they're in tip-top shape for when it does snow and you're good to go. But that is going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or anything, put them down below. I will get back to you. But uh, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.